Hello YouTube, in this video I'm going to be doing some repairs on my four jaw chuck on my lathe. In one of my previous videos I was trying to build a balancing tool for my jet ski flywheel and uh, noticed that I wasn't getting very consistent results. I pulled the jaws out of my chuck and noticed that there was some weird pressure points and so in this video we're going to take care of that problem. I've seen a few videos on how to do this to a three jaw chuck, but I don't think I've ever seen it done to a four jaw. In any case, this is going to be a slightly unorthodox method, but let's hope it works. There's a pressure point at the back here, and then you can see as you go towards the front, there's actually no mark at the front. And then this one you can see is grabbing at the front, but not at the back. I grabbed my Dremel. A lot of people use Dremels or die grinders. And so I was going to make a bracket to try to mount this into the um, the tool post somehow. And then I remembered that I had a couple of die grinders. So I looked in my air tool drawer and I found this thing. And I don't really have any bits for that. And then I remembered that I had this thing, which uses the same tips as a Dremel. And then I remembered that I have a holder for a boring bar that has an adapter so that you can use either three quarter or five eighths. And then I thought to myself, what are the chances that this will fit in to this? As for grinding the jaws, um, I think what I'm going to do is grind one at a time and a lot of people will probably think that that's very foolish. So I but figure doing it this way is probably my best bet because what I can do is put one in and take enough material so that it's flat from front to back. To preload them, I'm going to try something a little bit sketchy. I'm going to use mechanics wire and run it around bolt on the back side and then through you can see there's grooves on the teeth i'm going to run it through one of the forward grooves probably the third one back and then back up to this other bolt and then tighten this down a little bit to put some tension on it and that will hold it into the right position not only is there slop up and down in this direction, but there's also slop a slight amount in this direction. And so you need to put pressure on the jaw so that it's actually sitting in the position that it will be when you tighten it onto a workpiece. So there we have it after a liberal application of tomfoolery. I have the mechanics wire wrapped around the bolts on the back. They come around, it's hard to turn the chuck when it's in low gear, and then it goes through the groove in that jaw, and I have tightened down on this so it no longer moves around and it has a fair amount of strain on it. So now I've got to put a stone in here. I have one stone, so hopefully that gets me through this job. Okay, so my stone isn't even somewhat centered, but I have it hooked up to my air compressor and it's nice and solid. As you can see, it's going to be loud. You guys aren't going to be able to hear anything.
So I realized after all this time that I hadn't tightened this down because I got too excited about it actually fitting and I hadn't tightened this down. So yay, I've been grinding for like an hour on one chuck jaw. Anyway, it's turning out fairly nice. I put some red marker on there and it's all come off. Okay, so it took me about two hours to finish one jaw. So I checked the second jaw uh, before I got started. I've touched off on this one and I had to turn it in. How many thou on the dial? One, two, three thousandths. So that accounts for why my chuck wasn't cutting properly. Even though this isn't the most professional setup, it should make my cut quality a lot better. All right, so this one's not finished, but it's taking substantially less time. I've changed my technique a little bit. I could really stop now, but I want to make sure that I cut the full radius into these jaws. What I was doing before is using the, uh, the die grinder and the feed and I was feeding it in while turning it at 150 RPM. Uh, what I'm doing now, I have the belt disconnected and I turn on the die grinder and I feed in about a thousandths and then I ride it on one of the little nibs there on the, the jaws until I'm barely getting any contact and then I move on to the next one and I do that. And then once I'm completely done, what I'll do is I'll come through, dial in another half thousandths, and then run it back and forth with the power feed until I get them all completely even and completely smooth. So I was going to show you guys the quality of the finish on the factory ones compared to the ones that I had done. See there, that's quite the nice, this is the number one that I did. And this is one of the originals. I was wondering how much material I had taken off of the end. So between this surface where my thumb is and the surface where my finger was. So this one that I just did 
is 890 thousandths. So I decided to measure this one and it is 887 thousandths. So they're not very exact from the factory, so I don't really need to worry about that. I thought I would do a before and after measurement of the jaw. I have, so before I have 903.5. Turns out that this one's even worse than the last one. Pardon my camera work. I've got five thousandths dialed in. I know it's not really five thousandths because it's on the compound, but I've got five thousandths dialed in here and it's just barely touching on that back one. So you can see the taper is just massive in this. Um, I think the actual problem is in the chuck body, so I don't think these grooves are cut perfectly straight. Um, yeah, I think they're cut at a wonky angle. I'm numbering them now. I don't think I showed that, but I've got this one numbered one and the jaw that I ground first. Where is it? Yeah, this one here is numbered one there. And there, I'm going to finish the rest of these up off camera on both the taper and on this part of the shaft. You can see the needle is not moving. So now I've got it flipped around in the chuck. And you can see right on zero. It feels different and it was easier to set up. Um, I know that probably doesn't make sense, but I think what uh, made it easier to set up and the reason why it feels different is because the jaws before weren't hitting even on the workpiece. They were hitting more on the front or the back. And so when I was tightening the jaws, they actually felt spongy. And this time when I was tightening it, basically they go down, they hit the workpiece and almost immediately they're tight. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. It turned out way better than I expected. I honestly didn't know if my little die grinder was gonna make it all the way through this job. I paid about $25 for it about eight years ago. I've used it a few times. And uh, yeah, it worked surprisingly well. My chuck is now running perfectly true. I'm able to take parts out, put them back in, and dial them in perfectly. So that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.